Rock and Learn. I have a writing test coming up, and I want to do really well on it. Besides, I just want to become a better writer. My teacher gave me this prompt for my journal to help me practice. I wonder where my friend Marco is. Oh my! Sounds like someone needs help writing. <laughs> Did somebody call for Marco? Marco, I'm so happy to see you. Can you help me become a better writer? But of course, writing is one of my specialties. We'll work together to get it right. I'm Marco the pencil. Take some tips from me. To do the best on your test, here are some strategies. Take a big breath and let it go. Taking a test shows what you know. Eat something healthy, but don't overeat. When you mark your test, be sure to be really neat. The night before, get a good night's rest. So you can do your best on the test. Read the prompt carefully and you can use my tools to write a super paper. And don't forget to prove. Stick around and I'll show you some more so you can make your very best score. Yeah! Now, the first thing to do for a writing assignment is to read the prompt carefully. What does this one say? Write a composition about an adventure. So, what are you going to write about? I'm not sure. If you can't come up with anything real, just use your imagination by brainstorming. One idea might spark another idea. That's why it's called brainstorming. Let's see. I'd like to go to Mars. <laughs> Whoa, that really is using your imagination. But for this exercise, try writing about something that would be more likely. Okay, let's see. Riding my bike, that was exciting the first time. So was learning to swim. Um, riding roller coasters. Playing cards with grandma is always fun. But I don't think that would count as an adventure. Wait a second, here's a good one. My first camping trip. It was so much fun. That sounds perfect. I can hear excitement in your voice, which means you will be able to connect with the reader. And since it was your first camping trip, I'm sure it was an adventure. That really fits the prompt. Now before you begin, we need to talk about your audience. Who will be your readers? I don't know, Marco. I'm writing this in my journal, so I guess my reader will be my teacher this time. But what about when I'm writing on a test? I have no idea who is going to be grading it. Should I introduce myself? No, that's not necessary. Not many authors start out their books by saying, Hello, my name is, you know. <laughs> yeah, I haven't read many like that. A good thing to do is to pretend you're writing for someone you know. I probably wouldn't write the same way I message my friends. I know. I'll pretend I'm writing for my teacher. That would be a good choice for your audience. Now, we need to talk about the purpose. Usually we write because we want to communicate with others. We might tell a story. Or perhaps describe something. Giving instructions is another reason for writing. You can even write to persuade someone to think the way you do. Occasionally, we write just for ourselves, like in a diary. But that is not the case here. Now let's combine your audience with your purpose. Okay, my purpose is to tell my teacher about my camping adventure. Great! Be sure to put some of that excitement into your story. got part of it done. Read it to me. I am going to tell you about my first camping trip. I got up very early in the morning and my family drove a long way to the campsite. My Aunt Cindy hates to ride on long trips, so I'm glad she didn't come with us. Aunt Cindy is not my real aunt. She is my mother's best friend, so I call her my aunt. 
She has curly black hair. We had to help unpack before we could play. At the campsite, there are lots of trees and even a stream. Kevin scared Mom with worms. I was scared of bears when we went hiking. My brother scared me by telling me that there might be bears there. We had a campfire that night. My brother woke up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. Then he started screaming. Oh my! Your brother was screaming? What happened? <laughs> That's a surprise. But before I finish my story, could you help me make this first part better? Sure, as long as you promise to finish the ending. <laughs> it's a deal, Marco. Okay, let me begin by saying that you are off to a good start. But I know you can make your story much better. And to do that, we'll use my writer's toolbox. That's cool. <laughs> yes, it is. Let's see. First, we have the arranger. If these tiles are put in the right order, they make a picture. Writing can be like that, too. If we put our thoughts and sentences in the right order, we will paint a picture in our readers' minds. The simplest way to put our story in order is to have a beginning, a middle, and an end. The middle is where we take things that happen and put them in order so the reader won't get confused. Some people even jot down their ideas on a separate piece of paper to organize their thoughts. Then, as they write, they take events in order from the list and add details to them. I see. Since I've already started, I'll take events from the story and put them in order. Good idea. Let's see. I got up. That's definitely first. Then we drove to the campsite. The next thing is unpacking. Then Kevin told me about the bears when we went hiking. After the hike, Kevin scared Mom with worms. That night we had a campfire. Kevin woke up to go to the bathroom. And then... Oh, I can hardly wait to find out what happened. Hey, Marco, I'm not sure where to put the parts about Aunt Cindy. Uh, actually, your story may have some information that doesn't belong. You don't want to clutter the picture you're trying to paint in the reader's mind. Think of it this way. If we had tiles that didn't belong in our arranger, we wouldn't be able to make a nice picture. I think I understand. So I'll leave out the parts about Aunt Cindy, especially since she didn't even go with us. But won't that make my story too short? Not if you add more detail and description. You want to help your readers really experience your story. Okay, it looks like we've got the events all organized. Now what? Ah, let me look again into my writer's toolbox. Aha! This is what I was looking for. Whoa! Have you ever been fishing? Yeah, I've tried it a couple of times with my dad. Well then, you know that you need something interesting like bait or a lure to attract the fish. Something that will catch their attention. This hook definitely caught your attention. And it will remind you to use an interesting beginning to catch your reader's attention. Okay, Marco. So how can I create this interesting hook? Here are some ideas to help you. You can use action to make your readers feel like they are involved in your story. You can use a word picture to describe the setting. Tell your readers about where the story takes place to make them feel like they are actually there. You can ask a question to make readers think. Not a boring question, but one that makes your readers want to learn more. You can use an interesting fact to help reel in your readers. You can use a conversation. Let your readers hear what is being said to draw them into the story. Those are great tips! That's much better than I'm going to tell you about my first camping trip. I know I can do better. Honey, it's time to get up. We're leaving in 10 minutes, Mom called. I jumped out of bed, put on my clothes, 
and rushed downstairs. My family was going camping for the first time. Bravissimo! You used two of my ideas for creating a hook. You started with a conversation and went on to include some action. And you let us know your story would be about your first camping trip. Now, how did you feel about starting your adventure? I was excited, but I had no idea such a great adventure was ahead of me. Marvelous! Keep going! Let's see. Everyone helped unload the car and set up the tent. Whoa! Something's not making sense to me. Did you set the tent up inside your house? No. Then maybe this will help. Bada bing! A piece of cake? Now you're not making sense. Let me explain. This is my transitional cake. See how the icing holds the layers of cake together? Ooh, I never thought about it like that. I just thought the icing was to make it taste better. Well, that too. Just as the icing makes the cake taste better, transitional words help make your writing tastier. By filling in the gaps, transitional words help the reader to follow what you're saying. I think I understand why we use transitional words. But could you give me some examples? Well, I may have just a few. Look at this poster. Wow, that's a lot of words. It sure is. Later, I will tell you how to get a copy for yourself. With so many words to choose from, you won't have to use the same ones over and over and over and over. And <laughs> <laughs> okay, Marco, I get the point. Repetition can be boring. Exactly. How about this? Once outside, I climbed into the car. We began to drive. After what felt like forever, we finally made it to the campground. Everyone helped unload the car and set up the tent. At last, my older brother Kevin and I were free to explore. You've made some tasty sentences using my transitional cake. And you've helped your readers understand how long the car trip felt to you. Keep writing. We found a path. Hmm. I have a tool that might make that better. You want me to color a picture of the path? Sort of. I want you to use colorful words. They can be powerful verbs, specific nouns, rich adjectives, or adverbs to appeal to the reader's five senses. Using descriptive words can make your writing colorful. I understand. I should sprinkle in words that describe the way things look, feel, smell, taste, and sound. How's this? We found a winding path leading into the woods. Oh, I can almost see it. Now can you zoom in and provide a little more detail? Hmm, I want to tell you about this one tree. It was almost like it was a person reaching out. Oh, look at what I have here. <laughs> How did that get in there? I guess someone thought your toolbox was a toy box. No, this is my personification tool. Personification? Yes, personification is a writing tool that gives human qualities to something that is not human. If you don't overuse it, personification can help liven up your writing. Here is a good example. The vacuum cleaner cobbled up the dust. Wow! Machines don't really eat, but in this sentence it sounds like the vacuum came to life to gobble the dust. That's what personification is all about! Here's another one. My guitar gently wept. 
<laughs> and how about this personification? My car refused to start. I get it. Refusing is something that people do, so you personified the car. Exactly! Check out this one. The stars looked down on the sleepy town. Hey! That sentence has two things personified. The stars looking down and the town being sleepy. You're a smart one, you. I was wondering if you'd catch both of those. Let me try one. The temperature climbed to 100 degrees. You, you're good, you. You're good. Now that you understand personification, try using it with the tree you are talking about. How's this? One tree stretched its branches over a sparkling stream. A few of its leaves danced on the surface of the water. Oh, that's so beautiful. Like at a place I was born. You came from the forest? I'm a wooden pencil. What do you think? <laughs> Kevin scared me about bears. Ooh. I want to know exactly what he said to scare you. This tool may help. Now I know we're not turning my story into a comic book. Of course not, but you may want to add some dialogue in your story as a point of interest. This dialogue tool helps you develop your characters by having them speak to one another. But be careful not to make your whole story into one big conversation. Okay, here goes. Kevin dashed ahead of me on the hiking trail. Hey, come check out what I found, he called to me. What is that, I asked as Kevin pointed at paw prints in the soft ground. Looks like bear tracks, he said. What? There are bears around here? I tried not to sound too scared. That's great dialogue. I'm happy to see you're using colorful words and expressing your feelings. We continued to walk along the stream. The wild honeysuckle smelled good. Hmm, good is not so good here. Let me show you something that will make your writing sparkle like a shooting star. The simile tool. What's a simile? A simile is a figure of speech that compares two unlike things. And it is usually introduced with the words like or as. For example, you may have heard some of these before. The sea was as smooth as glass. The student was as busy as a bee. The mouse stood brave like a lion. Similes tell us how two different things are similar. A simile is like this balancing scale that shows two things weighing the same. Marco, do you realize you just used a simile to describe a simile? You said a simile is like a scale. You're taking to this like a fish takes to water. <laughs> and you're as sharp as a pencil. <laughs> Wait a second, I am a pencil. I'm not so sure that's a good example, but at least you're getting my point. <laughs> How about this? The wild honeysuckle smelled as sweet as candy. Ah, I can almost smell it. Describe how you were feeling as you walked on the trail. Uh, I was happy. How would someone know you were happy? I was smiling. What was making you smile? It was just so beautiful. Hey Marco, what if I write this? I smiled at the beauty all around me. Oh, that's creative. But then some noises in the brush scared me. Snap! Crack! Crunch! Hey! That sounds like what I heard in the bushes. What is that thing? That is my onomatopoeia tool. Onomato what? Onomatopoeia. 
I hope I don't have to learn to play that thing. <laughs> don't worry, it's easy. Onomatopoeia are words that are pronounced like the sounds they are describing. Like buzz or hiss. Swish. Hey, that's a good one! Meow! Ruff, ruff. <laughs> I can have a lot of fun with this tool! I know! Isn't it great? But be careful with onomatopoeic words! They're kind of like salt! If you use them too much, your story will leave your readers with a bad taste in their mouths! Good point! I'll try using a little onomatopoeia in this next part! Snap! I heard something crack and crunch in the bushes. Marvelous! I see that you used onomatopoeia by itself, and then you used two of them in a sentence. How did you respond to the sounds? My stomach jumped into my throat. Wow! Great use of personification! I thought a ferocious bear was going to grab me, but it was just a playful squirrel rustling the leaves. Oh, I love your description. You are really putting my writing tools to good use. Thanks, Marco. I'll keep going. Kevin snuck into the fishing supplies. Was he looking for some cake? Huh? <laughs> oh, the transitional cake. You want me to use a transition. That's right. We need some icing between your hike and the campsite. Here. This should be better. When we got back to the campsite, Kevin snuck into the fishing supplies. He had a plan to scare Mom. Nice transition! Next, Kevin had Mom open her hands and close her eyes. Hey! I can use the dialogue tool here. Go for it! Open your hands and close your eyes. Then you'll get a big surprise, Kevin sang as he went up to Mom. That's a great use of the dialogue tool. Maybe you could use the colorful word tool here. Went is a rather common word. But I'm not sure how to say it. It was almost like Kevin was bouncing. <laughs> then say that. Cool. You're doing great. Now tell me more about Kevin's surprise and your mom's reaction. She was surprised, all right. You should have seen her jump when Kevin put a bunch of wild, wiggly worms in her hands. Oh, wow! That's wildly wonderful! You just used another one of my terrific trusty tools! Alliteration! Lemon lollipops? Luscious lemon lollipops, to be exact. Alliteration happens when you use words that begin with the same letter, like wild, wiggly, and worms. It's useful when you want to emphasize something. In your writing, the words wild, wiggly, and worms all help your reader feel the wiggly squiggly movement. <laughs> <laughs> Look up here. Is pointed at paw prints alliteration too? It certainly is. If the words are right next to each other or even close together, they can be alliteration. Good writers sometimes use alliteration naturally, like you did here, to emphasize the length of the trip. After what felt like forever, we finally made it to the campground. You might even find some more if you read this story again. Now let's read the last sentence you wrote. 
Mom laughed with us as she wiped the sticky goo and dirt off her hands. Oh, I can almost feel it. Your mom's a really good sport. What comes next? Let me check my arranger list. Oh yeah, the campfire. That night, I enjoyed the cozy warmth of the campfire on my face. Dad entertained us with hilarious stories of camping trips he took when he was a boy. I heard the crickets singing their lullaby. My eyes started feeling heavy. I see a transition, colorful words, and even use of personification. Excellent! Thanks, Marco. And look! I use the dialogue tool in this next part. Time for bed, said Mom. We crawled into our sleeping bags and fell sound asleep. Later, when he left the tent to go to the bathroom, he woke us up with a scream. Hold on. Who's that? I was just about to ask you the same thing. Huh? This is my unclear pronoun detector. I'm not sure who you were talking about when you said he left the tent. Was it your dad or your brother? Oh, that was my brother. Well, you see, my unclear pronoun detector reminds me that sometimes I can use too many pronouns when I'm writing. I may know the person or thing I'm writing about, but that doesn't necessarily mean my reader knows. Here is a list of pronouns. It is okay to use pronouns, but make sure your pronouns clearly refer to nouns that have recently appeared in your writing. You may want to scan your paper when you are finished to double check all of your pronouns. Oh boy, oh boy! Now we're getting to the part I've been waiting for! That's right! It's time for my big surprise! Later, when my brother left the tent to go to the bathroom, he woke us up with a scream! A bear! He shouted, There's a bear! My dad rushed outside to investigate. When he pointed his flashlight toward the brush, we saw the bright eyes of an animal shining back at us. Phew, it was just a raccoon. I laughed because Kevin had scared himself with his own story about bears. Everyone went back to sleep after that. Wow, that was a great surprise. Yep, the end. Ah, no! You can't do that to your beautiful story! There has to be another tool in here someplace! Ah, here it is! My lasting impression tool! This dinosaur footprint will remind you to leave your reader with something to think about at the end of your story. I get it. The dinosaur's footprint leaves an impression that has lasted an extra long time. But how do I go about leaving a lasting impression with my story? You may want to reflect on what has happened to you. Other times you might suggest something for the reader to think about or do. You could end with a really nice description. Or maybe you want to use the ending to repeat your main point. You might end with the last event, but make sure to finish the story. You don't want it to end too abruptly. Whatever you do, make sure your reader feels like the story is complete. End it with a bang or a whisper. Just not the end. I never like to see a good story end that way. But Marco, I thought I did end with the last event. What you wrote was part of the ending, but your readers may not feel like the story is over. Maybe you shouldn't just leave the campers in the middle of the night. Okay, I'll try reflecting on what happened. Hmm. 
see if this makes a lasting impression. The next morning, we took down the tent and packed all the supplies. I took a deep breath of the clean, crisp air and climbed into the car. On the drive home, I thought about our fun adventure. I got to enjoy nature and spend time with my family. Best of all, I got to see my brother scared for once. Bravo! What a great ending! I like the way you showed the trip was finished and took time to reflect upon your experience. You even restated the main point in an interesting way. Read your story again, and we'll review the tools you used. Honey, it's time to get up. We're leaving in ten minutes, Mom called. I jumped out of bed, put on my clothes, and rushed downstairs. My family was going camping for the first time. I was excited, but I had no idea such a great adventure was ahead of me. Once outside, I climbed into the car. We began to drive. After what felt like forever, we finally made it to the campground. Everyone helped unload the car and set up the tent. At last, my older brother Kevin and I were free to explore. We found a winding path leading into the woods. One tree stretched its branches over a sparkling stream. A few of its leaves danced on the surface of the water. Kevin dashed ahead of me on the hiking trail. Hey, come check out what I found! He called to me. What is that? I asked as Kevin pointed at paw prints in the soft ground. Looks like bear tracks, he said. What? There are bears around here? I tried not to sound too scared. We continued to walk along the stream. The wild honeysuckle smelled as sweet as candy. I smiled at the beauty all around me. Snap! I heard something crack and crunch in the bushes. My stomach jumped into my throat. I thought a ferocious bear was going to grab me, but it was just a playful squirrel rustling the leaves. When we got back to the campsite, Kevin snuck into the fishing supplies. He had a plan to scare Mom. Open your hands and close your eyes, then you will get a big surprise. Kevin sang as he bounced up to Mom. She was surprised, all right. You should have seen her jump when Kevin put a bunch of wild, wiggly worms in her hands. Mom laughed with us as she wiped the sticky goo and dirt off her hands. That night, I enjoyed the cozy warmth of the campfire on my face. Dad entertained us with hilarious stories of camping trips he took when he was a boy. I heard the crickets singing their lullaby. My eyes started feeling heavy. Time for bed," said Mom. We crawled into our sleeping bags and fell sound asleep. Later, when my brother left the tent to go to the bathroom, he woke us up with a scream. "A bear!" he shouted. "There's a bear!" My dad rushed outside to investigate. When he pointed his flashlight toward the brush, we saw the bright eyes of an animal shining back at us. "Phew!" It was just a raccoon. I laughed because Kevin had scared himself with his own story about bears. Everyone went back to sleep after that. The next morning, we took down the tent and packed all the supplies. I took a deep breath of the clean, crisp air and climbed into the car. On the drive home, I thought about our fun adventure. I got to enjoy nature and spend time with my family. Best of all, I got to see my brother scared for once. Nice job! I really enjoyed your story. Thanks, Marco. Now remember, when you write, read the prompt carefully, then brainstorm and arrange your ideas. Next, decide who your audience is and what style of paper you are going to write. Keep all of the tools in your mind: the arranger, the hook. Transitions, colorful words, personification, dialogue, simile, onomatopoeia, 
alliteration and the lasting impression. Hey Marco, you left out the unclear pronoun detector. Oh, I did that on purpose. No, really. Sometimes it is best to check for unclear pronouns after you are finished writing. That way you won't block the flow of your ideas. I'll keep that in mind, Marco. I think I'll enjoy writing a lot more now. Oh my, looks like I need to help someone else get it right. Hey, writers! If you want to look at the posters I use for writing, you can download the posters for free at www.marcothepencil.com. Ciao!